Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How did it go? Uh, uh, fine. There were there was just one little glitch on the uh, slide that apparently the the leader and the congregation got switched, and so that's annoying. Well, mine looks different than that, so we'll just go with that. But we have it. We have it. anyway because Doug's singing now. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. No, no, you don't have to be sorry. No, every other month we alternate. Well, that's what I thought, but I thought, yeah, oh, maybe month. she's gone or whatever, so. No, no. Uh, June 9th. Yeah, yeah. For both. Because this one is the 11 a.m. You know, this is, I guess you and I need I just figured I just figured something came up and I'm like, oh, I don't care. I'm gonna no. do it. No, nothing came up. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
strong in me my flesh may fail but my god you never will cuz i may be weak but your spirit's strong in me my flesh may friends. Let's greet one another in the peace of Christ right now. Find a friendly face. Let's get the lights up. And the children, you are dismissed this morning. We're doing the commission. Commission. Yeah. All right, guys. Children, you are dismissed this morning to Children's Church. So you guys are good to go. So why don't we head on out and do that this morning. All right, um, can we get everybody that is headed off to youth camp this morning that is here uh, to come forward? So we've got some adults, we've got some junior hires heading to camp this mor- morning after church, and so uh, we want to welcome uh, those that are here to be come up and be part of that. And, um, you know, this is one of those things that I think when um, people are challenged, invited to go and spend time with God in creation, um, that sometimes there's obstacles that come up and want to prevent people from being able to go and be a part of it. And so we just want to pray for these guys and bless these guys as they get ready to head off to camp. And you guys, you don't have to face everybody. I'll make it easier on you. You can just face me. We'll make life, that way you don't have to stare at everybody looking at you. So hey, come on over here. Come on over. Uh, all right. And so we're excited about uh, these kids heading off to camp. Young adults, perhaps, well, maybe, not quite, sorry, not young adults yet, and I want to pray for uh, these guys that are head off to camp and the adults that are going with them and have the uh, opportunity to positively influence them uh, in Jesus, and so, uh, yeah, say a prayer over them, and we'll send them off and pray for the protection. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, your love and your grace. Uh, We thank you that you invite us into relationship. And Lord, as they spend time out in your beautiful creation, uh, we ask that you would fill their conversations, uh, fill their their time together with your presence, Uh, be with the the adults as they uh, supervise and as they uh, provide a a good example to the kids. And Lord, help the kids uh, to share their hearts, uh, share their lives, and be open to um, where you're calling them and inviting them to step out into faith and to trust you more. Lord, watch over them as they go, keep them safe, uh, fill their time with, with fun and excitement and uh, marveling at your creation. Gracious Lord, we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom of my life oh he is my song yes you are good
for being our strength, our stronghold, our fortress. Father, we rely on you, we trust in you, and we cling to you this morning. Thank you for being so good, oh good. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Wasn't that amazing? Weren't these guys great? Let's give thanks to God for them. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Brad, one of the pastors here. Uh, it's great to be with you today. Um, I thank you for worshiping uh, in person or online. We pray God's blessing on you. We know he's not bound by space and time. His spirit uh, will we'll take his word and touch our hearts with exactly each of us needs. That's the power of God. Uh, and then he, he gives us uh, the, the, the heart to receive what, what he would give us. And, and may you be blessed today. Amen. Amen. So uh, our theme, uh, uh, our series rather, is Prisoners of Hope, uh, and, and the, the idea here is that there are a lot of good stuff in our lives that, um, that, that, that is good to have in our lives, and yet if we take them and put them in the place of God, if we make them what our life is about, small g, our God, or, or make them our Savior, uh, we end up in, in a desert place. Uh, today we're going to look at individualism, uh, and, and, and we're looking at these things, one every week this summer. Uh, and, and always, these things would make us prisoners. They would put us in, in a prison, and, 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 and like there's no way out because we're making them our Savior, when actually there's only one Savior, his name's Jesus. And, and by his grace, he would make us a prisoner of this hope, this certainty uh, that we have in him. That's, that's our focus uh, this summer. It's really kind of exciting uh, to, to be a part of that. So my, my first year in the ministry, uh, we were in Denver. Actually, we were there for 20 years. And um, we, uh, th- it was uh, just an interesting congregation. And, and the, I remember uh, somewhere during that time, that first year, uh, uh, they, they had a bingo night. And there was this older couple, and I don't want to use their real names because it just wouldn't be nice. Uh, but she had this interesting voice. It was like this. And she would talk really loud sometimes, and it would voice you would never forget if you heard it, right? Uh, and that night, that bingo night, um, she and her husband had had a little problem. And, and so probably 10 times that night, she, would, she said, I just told John he could have it his own wrong way. I mean, it was like 
10 times, it, it, it just kind of echoed over the whole room. Uh, my, my wife and I, we, we went home that night, and I looked at her, and I said, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you when you can have it your own wrong way. You know, it, it was a joke from that time on. Uh, and, and for all those years, every once in a while, she and her husband would get into it, and she would just proclaim it to the world. I told John he can have it his own wrong way. <laughs> Individualism, right? Stand on your own two feet. Be who you are, right? You don't need anybody else. Take care of things. Take responsibility. Do it your way, huh? It's, and it's a good thing. I, you know, to be quite honest, I, I was raised that way. I mean, it's kind of an American thing, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, it's, it can be a good thing. And, and so uh, we, we, we see that and we kind of say, well, what's, what's wrong with, with that, with, with individuals? I mean, we even have a song that's really popular, right? I did it my way. And that's kind of neat when we celebrate the unique characteristics of someone, right? But I got a question for you. Doing it your own way. Have you ever crashed and burned? See, that's what happens when we put doing it my way with my strength, not letting anybody tell me what to do, right? I mean, I raised my kids that way. Standing on your own two feet, right? Do what you do, do what you do. Don't let somebody tell you how to live your life. And yet, and if that becomes our savior. Well, tell me, have you ever crossed a burn? Have you ever experienced that your way doesn't give you what you need? I mean, it's just not you and me, right? It's, it's everybody. I mean, how are we doing collectively as a human race, huh? How's that working for us? Or in our nation, how, how are we doing? We're doing it our way. How's that working? Now, I know uh, I, I wrote the big, my, uh, when I was putting this, series, this uh, message together, I wrote the paper, no, no, no more stories about you. you know, uh, but, but I'll tell you, I, I can really relate to this stuff, right? And, and there's, there's a couple times in my life that, um, that man, I was so stubborn. I was going to stand on my own two feet. I was going to do it my way. I wasn't going to ask for help for anyone. And because of that, people in authority who would have bent over backwards to help me never had a chance because it was so ingrained in me. I had a buddy of mine ask uh, th- this one guy like two years later. He said, man, I, I would have done anything for that kid. We would have gotten him a job. We would have made sure he could be here doing this with us. Crazy, huh? But I, I wasn't going there because I'm standing on my own two feet. So I was raised. That's what you do. I was doing it my way and my strength, and, 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 and that's the way it was. You know, the whole world, all of humankind seems to know that this kind of fails. I, I remember in high school, there was a song, uh, I was in the choir, there was a song we sang, and um, it, it, the words came from a famous poem, and it, it went something like this, it's... Uh, no man is an island. You know this song? No man is an island. No man stands alone, right? Boom. No man stands alone. Each one man's joy is joy to me. Each man's grief is my own. We need one another, right? You know this song? So I will defend each man as my brother, each man as my friend. I was talking with Pastor Nathan this last week, and uh, he was telling me something he saw online. Uh, this, this atheist was kind of rejoicing that there's a bunch of churches closing down uh, in, in America. And he says, but one of the negative things is that the churches provided community and we're drifting farther and farther apart. We're losing that community. Even though he was rejoicing that we didn't have the churches anymore. You see, we, we all know this. Every human being knows that we're not made to go it alone. That somehow we're, we're interconnected that not one of us can stand alone, that we need each other. Book of Ecclesiastes, it says this, two are better than one 
pity the man who falls down and has no one to help him up. And how can one keep warm alone? Two can defend themselves. No man is an island, right? I mean, God even says it. Except he goes on, he says, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. When I um, preach on this with a wedding, every once in a while the couple chooses this. And, and lots of times I'll use a visual aid, a visual aid, I'll take some pencils and I'll say, here's one, and I'll break it. And, and I can still break a pencil, by the way. And even two, and I take two pencils and I break them, right? And, and, I, say, and I talk about the third side and I get a two by four. And I put the two pencils with a two by four and I said, now what's the two by four? And that's Jesus, right? See, no man is an island, but if we stop there, well, take a look at our world, huh? We're crashing and burning, aren't we? It's all got to come from Jesus. I called uh, a member of our congregation last night. He got some um, bad health news. And, and we talked and, and we prayed. He and, uh, he and his wife are, are both uh, facing some challenges. And he shared with me how uh, he's been part of our men's Bible study for years. Uh, and he says, you know, it was amazing. It was, I, I could go to that Bible study this last week and I could share with them what's going on in my life and together we prayed to Jesus. See, no man's an island, but the two by four is Jesus. We forget that when we put individualism in the place of Jesus. We say, I can... Do it on my own, my own strength, my way. It just doesn't work, does it? We'd like to think it does. Somewhere in the back of my mind, even when I say that, I want to fight myself. Because I was raised in American, and I love being American. Don't, Don't get me wrong, right? I mean, I was raised to do that that way. But when you put it in the place of Jesus, when you look to be filled up the very essence of your soul by what you can accomplish. We just come out empty. The man is an island. <laughs> we need each other. But it's got to start with that two by four. It's got to start with Jesus. Individualism, it, it, it's good. Now, I, I need to say this. Individualism It's good, it's good to be responsible. It's good to stand on your own two feet. It's good not to expect someone to do it for you, to take responsibility. Those things are good until we put it in the place of our Savior. The bottom line here is that the law, the law is anything that tells us how to live our life. The law always accuses us It's good. The the law is always good. It always directs us, no matter where it's found, out in the the world or or in the the book, in the Bible, right? It always shows us the best way to live. But have you ever done it perfect? If that's where we look to get filled up, fall flat on our faces. It's not meant to be our savior. It's meant to show us that we need a savior. It's meant to kill us so that we can see, receive the love of a savior. There's this guy, his name was Paul in the New Testament. Well, most of the New Testament, now the New Testament is God's word and the spirit of God, we're told, give the words to to. To a lot, the words a lot of times to Paul, and he wrote them down, and right. So he was, he was this great Christian, right? But before that, he'd been a Pharisee of Pharisees. If anybody kept the law as good as it could be kept, it was this dude, huh? And you know what he said? He said, I count it all as rubbish, as trash, as garbage. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him on the road to Damascus and said, You got it all wrong, pal, and you know you do. It's not filling up your soul, is it? It's making you empty. 
He says, I count all that stuff as rubbish, my individualism, how great I could be, what the, I could dot, dot the I's and cross the T's, could accomplish great things. All oh, that, all oh, that Saul, he's a Pharisee of Pharisees. It's just rubbish, trash. So I can know Jesus, huh? And, and this is what he said. He, he says, who can rescue me from this body of death? My trying to do it myself. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his death and his resurrection, he gives me new life, life in him. And, and I think this is really important. Put, put that up for me. I think this is really important. I don't want you to hear me wrong today. I'm not talking about self-help. I'm not talking about like balancing individualism and Jesus and trying to get just the right balance here. I'm, I'm not talking about doing this better or doing that, but no, no. We never get there that way. It's a death and resurrection every day. We die to be in our own savior every single day. And we rise up in new life with Jesus as our savior every day. Paul, he, he wrote in Romans, again, the spirit gave him these words, but he wrote them down. He says, we are buried with Christ by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, read the rest of it with me, we too may have a new life. Let's do that again, one, two, three. We too may have, live a new life, I'm sorry, may live a new life. It's not about being better. It's about being brand new every day. The book of Titus, it says this about baptism. Baptism is the washing of faith and the daily renewal of the Holy Spirit. It's not a thing where I gotta be better. It's a thing that in the grace of God, the undeserved love, I'm brand new today. Well, how'd I do yesterday? It's why I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. I start brand new today. Isn't that awesome stuff? Were you trying to do it on your own yesterday? How'd that work for you? Were you your own savior yesterday? In your own strength? How'd that work? You gotta go make up for it, right? Oh, I just gotta do better today. No, 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 no. It's, 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 let it go. Jesus washes you clean in his blood. It's a brand new beginning, like a resurrection every day. Isn't that awesome stuff? That's what I want you to hear today, this gift that God gave Paul. Paul, you don't have to make up for all that stuff. You don't have to make up because you killed Christians. Wash clean. You start brand new. And you're not standing on your own two feet anyway. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. That's what he said. No longer was it with me in Christ. That's what fills the hole in our heart. There's this old hymn, uh, and, and it starts like this. Today your mercy calls us to wash away our sins. It's kind of, today your mercy calls us to wash away our sins. And I was thinking about this. Uh, it just kind of flew into my brain. There's one line in this hymn, and it goes like this. Go ahead. No question will be asked us. Read the rest of it with me. How often we have come. You ever think about that? I think this individualism saying, I've got to stand on my own two feet, when we have to come back, we say, well, I don't know if I can. I gotta do something first, right? I gotta fix it first. No question will be asked us. How often we've come. How often we've trusted ourselves instead of Jesus. How often we said, I'm gonna do it my way, not his way, my way. Huh? No question will be asked us. His grace covers us. You have a brand new beginning like a resurrection every single time. Awesome stuff, isn't it? I wrote this. Uh, when we look at this thing called individualism at its heart, it's the idea I don't need anyone else, just me and my way. Huh? But at its root, this is false. It leaves us isolated, empty, and alone. No man is an island. We know it as a, we know it as a part of the human condition. And we know it from the word of God. Leaves us isolated, empty, and alone, no matter how much success we may have. So the question today is, do we do, we do life alone as our own savior, our own God, or is there a greater wisdom 
and a greater hope. I'm a prisoner by God's grace of this certainty, this hope I have in Jesus. When we were raising our kids, uh, one of the One of the principles, really, that we talked about and we really try to live out is that we wanted our kids to have the freedom to go and live their lives. Because we knew, uh, um, we loved our kids and we wanted to make a great environment for them, right? And all those things. And and, uh, and, and we were a tight family. Sometimes as a pastor's family, you you get really tight. And and there was, uh, and Janie had cancer all those years, so it made us tighter. And and so we, um, we really talked about our kids knowing that they had what it took and also they had the freedom to go and live their lives. We just felt that that was really, really important. In fact, I remember Sarah was all lined up to go to college. She'd gotten scholarships at Concordia, Irvine, and like a week before she was to go, uh, uh, Janie uh, got, uh, the cancer came back and she was going to be in, in uh, treatment again, and Sarah pulled me aside and said, um, hey, Dad, um, should I stay home? Should I stay home for Mom? And you, you need me? And I said, Sarah, what do you think mom would say to that? She said to go live my life. Said, yeah, that's what we want you to do. We want you to go live your life. We have the freedom to do that. Do great things in God, right? So now fast forward. <laughs> Sarah now is married and she has one child. I don't think she had the twins yet when she told me this. But, but um, you know, Janie was with the Lord already. And, uh, and I remember I was really trying to live by that. I, I, my, my, trying to give my kids the freedom uh, that, that they could live their life. They didn't have to worry about the old man, right? And, uh, and I remember she said to me, we were together. I don't know if it was here in Hungary. She said, Daddy, um, you know, uh, I, I know that it's good to, for us to go and live our lives, but family is really important too. What's the greater hope here? Doing it my way or being tied to Jesus and through him with one another? God created us (laughs) for relationship. I mean, I'm sure you've you've heard me do this before, but it it just, I don't know, it just kind of burned into my soul. Uh, You know, Adam and Eve, they were created to have relationship with God and for each other. In fact, he said it's not good for man to be alone, so he created Eve. It's not good to be alone, he says, right? <laughs> and so he created Eve and, and, and they ate the fruit. And, and it says when God came that evening and they used, to, um, they used to walk with God in the cool of the evening in the garden. I don't know what that was all about. The way I equate it is that when Jane and I first married, we lived in Huntington Beach and every evening we would t- in the, as the sun was going down, we would take a walk on the beach. It was just like, it was like just awesome stuff, right? Every single evening, it was awesome stuff. That was God with Adam and Eve. Must have been amazing. And so God comes and they've eaten the fruit and they run away from God, they're alone. So sin does, it isolates us. And when God finally comes to them and it comes out, hey, what are you guys running for? Well, we ate the fruit, man. And he says, what did you do that for? And Adam says, oh, the woman you gave me. You know, she, she gave it to me and I ate. And, and I, I, I all, my soul just goes so dark every time I read that because He's cut off from God. Eve is not only his wife, she is the only human being on the face of the planet. And he just has thrown her under the bus. Can you be much more alone? Boy, that's doing it my way, isn't it? You see, that's where we end up with sin, we end up alone. That's where we end up with this individualism. When it's just about me. Nobody's tell me how to live my life. Don't you dare talk to me. I'm gonna do it. My strength, my way. Leaves us utterly alone. And life is supposed to be about relationship. That, That Emptiness in our soul, it's not filled by great accomplishments or doing it my way. It's only filled in relationship with him and, and through him with one another. It, it's really the root word, the root idea of the 
Hebrew word shalom. Peace in these relationships. And that's what we lose when we walk away from them. Jesus, he finds us in that alone place and he connects us again with God. Classic picture. Look at this guy. Woohoo. <laughs> Have you ever been on the outs with someone really close to you? And then you get connected again. Usually by saying, I'm sorry, and you're forgiven, right? And life is complete once again. That's what happens with Jesus and us and God. He, he enfolds us back to himself in his arms of love. And the, the hands bear the mark of the nails. That's what life is supposed to be about. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's about this relationship. His way is relationship, community, doing life together, first with him and then with one another. When he was walking this earth, um, this one night he prayed all night long, and then he, the next day, he chose his 12 disciples. Put that up for me. It says he appointed the 12, uh, and he designated them apostles. Apostles means the sent ones, right? Because he was going to send them out, uh, that they might be with him. Now, this is an amazing Greek word, this, that they might be with him. It actually means um, that he might rub off on them. Isn't that a cool word? That he might rub off. See, that, that, that's what happens. That's what happens when, when folks are together, right? You, you kind of rub off on each other. Well, Jesus said, I called them so that they might be with me, that I can rub off on them. Yeah, that really is what happens in relationship, right? It, uh, uh, parents and children, wh- whether we like to believe it or not, because there's a lot of pressure on parents, right? Parents are going to rub off on their kids. Amen? Yeah. It, parents, and, and, and have you ever noticed when people are married after a while, they start looking alike? I mean, I'm just saying, they do start looking alike sometimes, right? Why is that? We rub off on each other. Jesus calls us so that he might rub off on us, that he might be that close in our lives, see? That he might do life with us. And then it says, and he might send them out. So there's this connection to Jesus, his, the very essence of who he is rubbing off on us, so that we can rub off on others. That's the essence of what life is. It's what we were created for. It's what we lost when we walked away from God and went to this place of doing it my way. Huh? It's so interesting. Go ahead. Uh, at the very beginning of Mark 1, Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of God is here. Repent, change your mind. For the kingdom of God is right in front of you. The, the word here near is egos. It means for right in front of you. Jesus brings the kingdom. So what are they supposed to change their minds about? I think at its root is whether they're going to do it their way, the way of isolation and aloneness, or turn away from that and do life with God in Jesus Christ, who's staring you in the face and who's staring you in the face right now, by the way. Man, the kingdom of God is right in front of you. The arms of Jesus are open wide. The hands that bear the marks, the nails, and are there to love you. He says, come follow me, do life with me. I want to rub off on you. So that you can rub off on others. I'll make you fishers of men. Isn't that awesome stuff? Here. In the book of Acts, 3,000 people came to faith. 3,000 people came to faith. What was their lifestyle after they came to faith? They're brand new Christians. What happened? It says they devoted themselves. That's a pretty big word. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That is, this connection they had with God through the Holy, through the Holy Scriptures, right? The Spirit of God would touch them with the reality of Jesus. So this connection, doing life with Jesus, and to the fellowship. To each other is the family of Christ. What does this look like? Oh, they met together in worship, large group worship. They broke bread in their homes. They did life together. They rubbed off on each other. Oh, and and then they rubbed off on their world. 
the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You see that? Now, lots of times we Christians, we want to stop with, especially in America, just Jesus and me. It was never just Jesus and me. Life is much more full and richer than that. He called the disciples, there wasn't just one of them. There were 12 of them. And they were a motley crew. There was one guy that wanted to rebel against the Romans. There was another guy that did business with the Romans. And so it went. How did these guys get along? How did they do life together? They were family. In Jesus, they were family from that time forward, see? And through them, their world was touched. When they were going to feed the 5,000, Jesus, when the 5,000, Jesus says, you give them something to eat. This is what you guys are doing. You're going to help them. You're going to connect with people. You're going to have life in my name. This is what it's going to look like. This is life. Not isolated and alone. My way. It's connected with God and through him with others. The Greek word ekklesia, the Greek word for church, it actually means a gathering of God's people. It's not a building, it's not an institution. It's a people. There are 59 one another's in the New Testament. You know what one another is? Love one another. Be kind to one another. Forgive one another. Serve one another. Bear one another's burdens. You can't do one another alone. And there's 59 of them in the New Testament. I, I mean, it's, it's fairly often you see these puppies, right? Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. That's the night he was going to die. These things are important. Why? Because he calls us into this rich life not isolated and alone in my way. Not with the sandcastles I can build. But to walk with him, be, have him rub off on us. To be filled up in his love and, and through him with others. One of these one another is, is this one in Ephesians. Love one another out of reverence for Christ. And this is the beginning in this section. It's talking about the relationships of those who are closest in our lives. Husbands and wives and children, and it branches out from there. It all starts with a one another, with relationship. Book of Romans, uh, uh, there, it starts like this. Uh, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. So what does that mean, in view of God's mercy? What, what's that all about? In view of the fact that you're not alone, in view of the fact of Jesus who has come to connect with you, in view of the fact that the light, that he gives you this life in him, that he's come to rescue you, in view of him filling up your soul, now offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what's the con what does this mean? What's the context here? I mean, these are really wonderful, beautiful words. Man. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, what's he talking about? How is he, what's the application here? We can take a test and pass it, but what does it look like in, in flesh and blood reality? Well, he tells us the very next word. The very next words, he says this. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Don't think of yourself too high than you are. You want to, uh, uh, th that's the pattern of the world. Pattern of the world is individualism. Stand on your own two feet. Build your own castles. You don't need anybody else. Take care of yourself. How does that finally work for us? Be transformed, it says. Why? Because we know Jesus. We know another way. We know the way of relationship. We know the way of family. We who are many form one body. And each of us is a part of it. And, and it doesn't stop here. It says we have different gifts according to the grace given. It, we are meant to touch the world through the gifts that God has given us. To touch people who are so alone 
and who so need the touch of this Savior who has come for us. There's this uh, line from this film, you're part of this world, aren't you? And, and it's, spoken, it's spoken accusatorially in the film, right? You're part of this world, aren't you? But I think for us it's a blessing. See, we're not meant to do life alone. It's empty in a desert place, and it leaves us empty. We get to do life as part of this world as the people of God. I don't know if you've ever been on a mountain like this. I, it's awful cold, huh? It's above the tree line and the wind blows and uh, vertical snow. Uh, uh, when I was uh, in Denver, I think my early third or fourth year, I, I had a good friend who, she was a, a counselor, and she, she gave me this book to read, and, and a, a psychiatrist had written this, PhD guy, and, and it's something he put together for, for marriage couples who um, married couples who, who couldn't talk to each other at all anymore. Their marriage was in such a shambles that, that they couldn't even talk to each other. And what he taught them, he taught them how to describe their feelings so the other one could see how they're feeling through a story. And I'll never forget, and these are real life stories, this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is real life people. Uh, and, and this one guy was talking to his wife and he said, he said, uh, think of the coldest uh, most desolate peak with lots of feet of snow on it, below zero, and, and there's vertical snow, the wind's blowing, and there's nobody there but me. And I'm completely naked, and I'm so cold. My feet are in the snow, I can hardly feel them anymore. And I'm trying to get warm, but it it's below zero, I'm just freezing. And I'm on this mountain and there's nobody there. Nobody in sight. I'm just so alone and cold. And he says, that's how I feel. That's where individual leaves, I'm sorry, individualism leaves us sometimes. There's another hill. It's called Calvary. The one on which Jesus died. Where the love of God descends to us, holds us close, and says to us, you're never alone. I'm with you. Your mind. It empowers us to do the same for another. We're prisoners of hope. We've got Jesus. We have been freed from the prison of doing it my way, of being on that cold, desolate mountain. to live in the warmth of the Savior. Amen. Would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, uh, <laughs> you know, Lord, we take good things sometimes and, and we take them too far. We, we try to make them our Savior. We do that with individualism. Lord, we, we know sometimes it's good for us to be uh, responsible and to stand on our own two feet, all those things. We know that, Lord. And yet, please forgive us for making those things our Savior, our God, and then wondering why we're crashing and burning and feeling alone. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would touch our hearts. Whatever whatever moment, whatever mountain we're on right now, the the coldness, we pray that you would blast through that with your love, that right now we might feel the warmth of your love surround us, and that we might know the joy of carrying that love into the relationships close to us, and into the whole world. We pray in your name and all God's people say, amen. We stand and we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
suffer under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen, church. Let's come before together as a body of believers um, and lift up prayers of the church together. So let's bow our heads and pray this morning. Father, we, uh, we come before you during this season, Lord, this season of, of, um, of summer, um, of, of vacationing, of doing things a little bit different, Lord. Um, we just pray for safety as people travel ar- uh, around. We pray for um, the, the, the youth that are going on their camp this week. And for all of the other activities happening this summer here in our church, we ask for your mighty hand to, to, to bless us, give us travel mercies as we head about and go about our ways. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we come before you and we pray for VBS, Lord. We pray for those children that are going to be coming to our church, Lord, um, to hear your word. Um, some of them from, from our church here, but hopefully some of them from our community and our neighborhood. We pray for the entire week, the organization, the, the preparation that it takes, the excitement, the buildup, Lord. We pray that your mighty hand will be upon the entire VBS week, Lord. And may we continue to, to plant seeds in the life of children, um, water those seeds, Father, and just walk alongside them. Those of you that, those are those kids that already know you. So, Lord, we pray for VBS, uh, Lord, in your mercy. And, Father, um, we live in a world um, that's, that's, that's fallen to sin, and, um, and we, have, we have health issues and ailments and, um, and people suffering from a variety of things. And so, Lord, uh, today we lift up all those who are sick, Lord, uh, who are physically ill, who are, are dealing with a disease um, it's either just onset or, or continuous. We pray as the uh, grand physician, your mighty hand on their lives, those that also suffer from mental illness, Lord, uh, depression, anxiety, all the things that, um, that keep them, uh, to keep them away from the focusing on you. Um, and Lord, we just pray your mighty hand um, on their lives that you help them to get help. Um, you surround them with people that love them. Um, to just be able to um, to continue and, and live lives that are that are joyful and and fulfilled and blessed, Lord, by you. So, Lord, in your mercy. And Father, it's it's no uh, no surprise that every time we turn on the news, we hear of something uh, devastating or tough around the world. We pray for all of the um, the weather that's been happening in our country, the tornadoes that has disrupted families and lives, and and really uprooted some people, Lord. We also pray for um, for uh, the Israel and Hamas war, Lord. Father, may your mighty hand be in that entire situation. Uh, Difficult, Lord, difficult, difficult situation. We pray for the war in Ukraine and anything else that's happening in our world, Lord, um, that that um, that is displacing people, that people are in poverty, that people are hungry, that people are dying. Lord, we just pray your mighty sovereign hand in those situations that you help the leaders make the best decision, Lord, for, uh, for those situations. So, Father, we commend ourselves to you, our country, and who we are in you as we, uh, we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the power and the glory and the glory forever and ever amen please be seated let's get that video up there kevin so linda what did you think when these guys showed up i knew that god answered prayer because these were the most wonderful men they had to be from the lord I was going to get some help. I'm all alone. I'm 82. I don't have anybody to help me. And they're doing a wonderful 
job, but most of all, they're so kind and very, very, very into the Lord. Thank you so much, everybody from the church that's helped me get me uh, with inspectors coming and everything from the state. I needed to have all of this done, and they're saving me so I can stay in my home. Thank Amen. you. God bless you all. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank And friends, that was a testimony from what happened in Love Rockland of this lady who was going to have uh, inspectors come in and probably she was going to have to leave her home because it needed a lot of work. And uh, the Love Rockland team was able to help her home get those things fixed so she could stay in her home. So if you participate in Love Rockland, can we give them a round of applause for everyone who did that? And our prayer is to do that going on, and that's part of our offering moment. Um, you know, while your tithes do go to keep our operation here going here at St. Matthew with our building and our services, we want you to know that it's also going to do outreach in our community. And so when you when you give to our church, when you're faithful in the, the, the things that God has blessed you with financially, we want you to know that we're extending it not just here, but we're extending it to our community. Although those ways that you're able to give in person online or via text or via mail if you're watching please continue to support our ministry and all that we do let's pray for our tithes and offerings this morning father we come before you today and we give you thank you we thank you for that lady lord and the fact that we were able to help her in, in her home stay in her home what a blessing lord may you fill her with uh with joy and um and abundance lord knowing that you love her these acts of kindness show people that we care and we love because we do um so it's 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 a part of what we what we do in our lives lord so we ask that you bless our tithes and our offerings this morning all that it does all the monies that go to our ministry and to our supporting ministry in our community may you continue to bless it and maybe use it in a wise way in jesus name we pray and we say it together amen all right church so i'm closing the service because uh the pastors are running the third service so we have something coming up this year so let's go to that first slide all right so we want you to take pastor brad with you this summer so the marketing and communication team met, and we thought it would be really cool to do an interactive thing where, um, where you take Pastor Brad with you somewhere, and you post a picture, and let us know where he's going. So if you're out, like, paddleboarding, like, take a little snap and post it on Facebook and uh, just hashtag St. Matt Summer Snaps. And what we want to do is we just want to know where you're at if you go to Europe. Take Pastor Brad of Europe with you. If you know, if you're if you're with a family at a barbecue, take them somewhere with you. So we want to see these posts online. It's just a way for us to do community together, and it'll be something fun. The ushers will be passing them out as you leave today. So take a button and travel with Pastor Brad somewhere. See where he goes. We want to see him go to many adventures. Amen. All right, you guys like that? All right. So the next thing that we have is, uh, of course, VBS. We had a great work day yesterday. We created a bunch of stuff. And you're going to see that from actually after today, we're going to start filling up the whole space with a bunch of VBS scuba stuff. So if you haven't signed up your kids, please sign them up. And we, of course, need volunteers for a variety of shifts and a variety of volunteers for that. Here we go. Here we go. Next, um, we have our Honduras mission trip that is coming up. And so the Honduras mission trip is really, really important. Uh, so we did that last year, and we're going to have an informational meeting on Sunday, June 30th. Is that the, the last one we have? And then the last thing is we need some volunteers. We're having our South Plaster Performing Arts camp. We have over 60 kids already signed up for four tracks. Um, but we need some volunteers. The biggest shift is from 3 to 5.15. We know that's a difficult time. But if you're able to give us one or two days, we need some bodies. We have qualified instructors leading the session. So you're not doing anything hardcore. But we could use uh, not just adults, some high schoolers. Um, we'll take some high schoolers. If you want to come hang out with kids during their activity time, that is something that's coming up. And I...
Oh, and we have a VBS workday this Saturday, and um, that is to kind of set everything up. And I didn't know about that one. So that's the last one. I think that is it. All right, guys, let's stand up and let's close our service with a closing prayer. Father, we ask that you bless our day, Lord. Bless our week as we go about, Lord, in our different endeavors, work, school, vacations, traveling. May you uh, fill us, Lord, with joy as we continue to live for you and in community with each other. Help us to, to love one another as you've called us, Lord. And so we ask for a blessing on our week. In Jesus' name we pray and we say together, amen. Here we go. We close off with the song, church. It goes like this. We are a chosen generation. Rise up, holy nation. And God, we live for you. You have called us out of darkness into light so glorious. God, we live for you. God bless you. Have a great week.